The whole family living here. We don't belong here. We are going to be OK, aren't we? We've got a new home to build. World at Heard, Sunday at 8.30 on STV. On ice, Sunday nights on STV. Claire Grogan and her family enjoy magical Morocco. First ever camel ride. Right? It's pretty scary. <laughs> Two STV viewers head to the Highlands. Looking for you don't get suit in your mm -hmm. face. Enough to put your head out the window. <laughs> and Paul English brings you the best of Ibiza. Scottish Passport 2012, Monday at 8 on STV. To get more out of Scottish Passport 2012, go to scottishpassport.com to join STV Live Chat and more. Sit back, put your feet up and use your talent for relaxing. SCS Sofa sponsors the talent show story. Hello. I would like to sing you a song. Over the decades, the talent show has launched the careers of many a young wannabe. Lena Zavarona. When you look back at the history of the talent shows that have been on in this country, children have always played an integral part. I mean, I'd actually steal you to and adopt you. I think you're so cute. The whole appeal of child stars, it's the granny factor. Oh, isn't she cute, you know, and they're so nice. And they win you over immediately. The 1970s was the golden era of the child star, when Opportunity Knox was at the forefront of finding that raw talent. Ladies and gentlemen, for Master Neil Reed singing his Decca record once again, Opportunity Knox. One of the first youngsters to be catapulted into the limelight was we Neil Reed. It's a lovely suit. Mother of my I remember watching Neil Reed. He was so sweet because he would stand there and sing Mother of Mine. And Neil was just adorable. People would cry when they watched him. I remember the experience of just kind of being in the studio and, you know, seeing the sort of red lights of the cameras round about you. Couldn't really see too much of the audience, but just this sense of magic in the air kind of thing. That's what it felt like. What you Neil went up knock six times in a row and became a household name. It was a, a move from the playground right into the spotlight overnight. The fact that I was winning was kind of like almost irrelevant. You know, it was just, I just was loving the experience. It was just great fun. sold four million copies of Mother of Mine worldwide and was soon the youngest singer to top the album chart. When you're 12 and you're doing all of that stuff, to be honest, I think it's easier than it is when you're 18 because you don't realise that this could be make or break for you. You know, that pressure isn't there. But we, Neil, couldn't stay we forever. Nature dealt his career a cruel blow. I had about two years and then my voice broke. And then after that, I just couldn't sing. You know, you wouldn't have wanted to come anywhere near me to hear me sing at that point. Neil Reed wasn't the only child star to find the leap into adulthood challenging. Hello, everybody. Hello, Bonnie. Yes, Bonnie Langford was one of Opportunity Knock's youngest discoverers. Opportunity Knocks for me happened when I was six years old, very little. I had no idea I was in front of 15 million people. And I probably wouldn't even know what 15 million people look like. Who would? No nerves, no worry. I just enjoyed it. And that's how it should be when you're young. But despite her career flourishing in the years to follow, Bonnie found it hard to shake off her cutesy image. She was just the stereotypical brat. And yet, that was brilliant acting. People think that that's me, when in fact it's not. 
And sometimes, particularly when I was going through um, some kind of adolescence, there were times when I wanted to say, will you stop harping back to the past? Will you stop going on about me? I'm not that anymore. If you won't, I'll scream and scream and scream. You what? I'll make myself sick, and I can. Everyone that's been a child star will tell you that, you know, it's difficult because people don't want to accept you as something new. But for most of us, Lena Zavaroni was the child star who had come to represent the perils of finding fame so young. If they could see me now, that little girl... Lena Zavaroni, one of the greatest talents, I think, we had in this country, you know, a Judy Garland of her day. Lena Zavaroni was a lovely, innocent girl with the most amazing vocal talent. She had almost an adult's voice in the body of a child. She had something unique. She was a typical wee lassie who made it really big. She didn't realise how good she was at the time. Lena came from the Scottish island of Butte, where her parents ran a fish and chip shop. From the very beginning, Lena was... She was talented, and it was a natural talent. And she was singing. Oh, God, I think that she was singing before she could walk, actually. <laughs> In 1974, a moment came along that was to change Lena's life forever when she made her first appearance on Opportunity Knox. She won it, I think, for four or five weeks. She was enjoying every minute of it. The funny thing is, my, she's making eyes at me. <laughs> she absolutely hated that song. <laughs> she, did, she did not like it. But the public loved it. The song was a top ten hit and Lena moved to London to live with her agent. <laughs> Lena's star was soaring. She appeared in Las Vegas alongside Frank Sinatra. And in 1976, she performed for the Queen Mother. <laughs> Two years later, 14-year-old Lena teamed up with Bonnie Langford to star in their own show. <laughs> We became great friends. We used to go shopping together in Brent Cross, <laughs> and then we did television shows together, and it was as simple as that. Things were different for Lena, because she was away from home and I wasn't. And in a way, that brought us together, because we had this normality in our work, difference in our home lives, but balanced each other out. I'll never forget, there was a song, the old Hollies hit, uh, The Air That I Breathe, that would almost bring me to tears now watching it. It was just superb. I always remember Lena because she, she would win any talent show now. This was a, absolutely a supreme voice. But despite her huge success, Lena found her teenage years difficult to cope with. Now, what's all this diet bit? I came up to London and, of course, I went on TV and I looked too fat. So I just had to go on a diet. I mean, I was all fat and they could get nothing to fit me to go on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Lena was eventually diagnosed with anorexia nervosa. A lot of young people find it very difficult to grow up in any world, and we will all adopt different phobias or challenges in our lives. And for Lena, um, she decided that her strength and her control in her life was to not eat. In 1982, Lena's illness hit the headlines. Her health was deteriorating and her career had ground to a halt. But what was at the root of her anorexia? Was the pressure of being a star just too much for a child to bear? If I could use my hindsight and I thought that Lena was going to become anorexia, I would have never thought for a minute, oh, no way I would think of putting her into show business. <laughs> Yeah. 
Lena Zavaroni never managed to overcome her anorexia or depression. In 1999, the nation's favourite child star died of pneumonia, aged just 35. The thing that saddens me about that is that people remember Lena Zavaroni more for her problem with anorexia than for her absolute talent, which was this brilliant, brilliant ability to sing and this wonderful voice. And it's a shame we can't hear it now. She enjoyed making people happy. And I think that was one of her main points, you know, in, in her life, to make people happy and make see them laughing and clapping and enjoying her, her performances. She was just an ordinary wee lassie. That's what she was. Next, we show how Britain's Got Talent brought child stars back to the talent show roller coaster. I didn't like it. I loved it. But it hasn't always been an easy ride. That was one of those awful moments. The producers are screaming in Anton Deck's ears. She can't sing again. SCS are proud to sponsor the fabulous talent show story.